Hello and welcome back to It's All Good. I'm your girl Latavia and we're back for another episode. I hope you all enjoyed last week's episode, um, getting to hear from and learn a little bit more about my mom. And yes, I know we do look alike. Yes, yeah, she's my twin. Um, so, and it seems the older I get, the more and more alike we look. But um, before I get started with this week's episode, um, did just want to take some time to share what I am grateful for. There are several things and I will say as as always I am continue to, I'm grateful. I continue to be grateful to be alive as well as for employment. Um but more so this week I would say grateful for memories and the opportunity to reconnect with some um friends as well as former students which kind of um kind of leads me to what I want to talk about this week Um, because in just trying to prepare for kind of coming back to recording as well as thinking about topics and things that I want to cover making sure it's relevant but also being true to myself uh, is just like hey I've been doing this for a little while and I feel like I did some level of an introduction when I first began but It's like, wait a minute, I don't know if I've ever actually taken the time to tell you all who I am, what I do, or a little bit about me. Um, I think for those who have been listening from the beginning, or if you listen to a few episodes, you've been able to, I hope you've been able to gather a little bit of information about me just based on the things that I've shared, some of the experiences um, in terms of having my friends. But I did want to take some time this week to just kind of you know kind of I think of the song allowed me to reintroduce myself uh, because like I said I've been doing this for a little while and I appreciate those who have been listening since the beginning of this journey Uh, but for those of you who may be new to this it's all good process journey I welcome you and so I am Latavia I am the host of this podcast it was something I started honestly the idea came from sitting in a meeting at one of my previous jobs of just sitting around noticing that there was a lot of mediocrity, a lot of things I did not agree with, I didn't understand. And it's just like, wow, people are really allowed to get away with a little bit of everything. And so kind of a combination of that, as well as just conversations that I've had throughout the years with friends and family. And, you know, we'll get into these discussions and it's like, oh, this is really great. And it's like, oh, we should record this or this will be good for people to know. So that's kind of just a little bit of the, I guess, history or origin story of this podcast. Um, But for those who, like I said, you may have learned a little bit about me from listening, but for those who don't, um, I am a military brat and that I don't, I'm not a brat. I don't identify with the brat aspect of it, Uh, but my dad was in the military, so definitely moved around a lot. So that whole question of where are you from? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. And people always think I'm being a jerk or whatever, but I say nowhere or a little bit of everywhere. And that's because I've literally lived several different places. Um, Was born in Wyoming. No, I'm not from Wyoming, but I was born there, lived there for less than a year. Uh, Germany, Georgia, Turkey, the country, not the city in North Carolina. Um, And most of my adult life has been in North Carolina. I did spend three years in North Carolina, in Fayetteville, North Carolina, uh, when I was in elementary and middle school, elementary going into middle school, and then went to Delaware when my dad retired. Was definitely asking like, Delaware, what country, what state is that in? Um, But so, which is why I still have a Delaware number, Uh, but did go to middle school and high school there, went on to college in Philly and then back to North Carolina for law school. So most of, like I said, most of my adult life has been North Carolina. And so yeah, just a little bit of my origin story and why I do not like the question, where are you from? And if you keep pressing me, I will continue to say everywhere or nowhere. Um, Lately, sometimes just to make life easier, I just say North Carolina because that's where my parents are and my sister. So North Carolina is kind of home at this point. Um, But like I said, as a profession, I have talked about that 
a little bit here and there in different episodes, but I am my primary, I guess, trade or the way I earn my money is as an attorney. If you talk to friends or family that knew me when I was younger, they say, some will exaggerate and say I came out the womb saying I want to be a lawyer. I remember it starting somewhere in like third or fourth grade when I started learning more about actual black history as well as civil rights movement. I'm learning about Thurgood Marshall. So initially I was trying to be a civil rights attorney. Um, still, that's still near and dear to my heart, but that was my introduction. That is why I wanted to become an attorney. Um, and so I have been an attorney now for a little over eight years and have done a few different things. I've worked in private practice. I've also spent a lot of time working in higher education um, in student conduct, as well as doing things with Title IX, which is why you guys have heard me talk about different things related to that. Um, but I would say in that, um, and specifically my time working in higher education, one of the things that I loved or love about being on a college campus, aside from the fact that, you know, when I was in college, I had a blast. Sometimes I think back and like, you could have done more, you could have had more fun, but Either way, I enjoyed it, even in law school, as stressful and um, challenging as it was at times. When I think back, we had a good time. We found ways to enjoy ourselves um, in the midst of everything that was going on. Um, but going back to kind of just like I said, what prompted some of this is while I was working at one of the universities, I worked in student conduct. And prior to that, when I was in law school, I worked in res life, so I was in the residence hall. So it gave me a great opportunity to, while I was in school, I was also working and kind of was able to get kind of best of both worlds in a sense of, although I was in law school, our law school was on the main campus. And if you don't know, I went to North Carolina Central University School of Law and Temple for undergrad. But um, but at law, in law school, like I said, I worked in undergrad. I'm sorry, I worked with undergrads. And so I was able to meet and interact with a lot of students who were in undergrad at the time, as well as um, in addition to law school. And then when I went back and started working there in conduct, I was still able to work with students, um, which is one of the things that you know brought a lot of the joy from that experience. Uh, and some of them have gone on to, they have now become lawyers. You know, they talked about wanting to do that when they were in school. So it's cool just to see that full circle of, I remember when you were a freshman and you lived in my building, or I remember you worked for me and you said you wanted to go to law school and you've done it and now you're a lawyer and practicing and they're all doing well um and then another student he um he never directly worked for me and i honestly forget how we got connected but um he was always i want to say he maybe he was part of my judicial board but he was one of the students that was helpful when it came time to coming up with ideas to connect, but he reached out to me recently for some things that he's working on and was just sharing. Um, now that he's graduated, he's gotten his master's, he's working, like he's in his career. And one of the things he he, he's, he writes, uh, and when I was working there, I remember we did this program of, I was trying to prepare a training for new students, for new student orientation. and nothing very little about conduct and rules and policy is is exciting is fun and so it's like okay i've got these new students coming in how do i get this information to them because it's stuff that they need to know but i know most people myself included don't always want to read a policy or rules like i do it because that's what i do but trying to find a way to take the information that they needed to know that was vital for them in terms of from a safety standpoint, just a knowledge um, as they began, you know, what I call adulting in a bubble in college. And so I think I went to him and was like, hey, these are the scenarios that I have. Like, these are some of the frequent ones we have. And love and hip hop is something that everybody's watching or can relate to. And so I gave him the concept and was like, can you help me find some people who, you know, maybe can kind of act out some skits? He took it from real basic bullet point ideas, created a script, held auditions, and like directed the whole thing. So we had a whole mini play that we were able to do for this, the new students when they came in. And I was blown away of just not by the fact that he took it and created, but just the initiative that he showed. And 
the great thing was at the time was it helped me connect with the students or my office connect with the students in a way that we otherwise would not have been able to, um, but also kind of developed a report with he and I and what I kind of getting to the point of why I'm bringing all this up recently. I said he re reached out to me about some things that he was working and he shared that, you know, that was, I guess, kind of an igniting point for him of it was something he'd always been, he'd been thinking about wanting to do, but wasn't sure, wasn't sure if he could do it. And that me asking him to do that or like encouraging that um, has been, was like kind of a, I don't know, like I said, just that he, he put it, I think they had something of like, I saw something in him and I'm like, wow, I had no idea. I was just trying, I did see that, okay, you're really passionate about this and I see you have, a, you know, it seems like you have a knack for it, a talent for it, and you're helping me if it's helping you. Um, but hearing that, it was just a reminder of, and in some of the other things that we spoke about, of taking the time to reflect, because he was just sharing, you know, as he's getting established in his career, that, you know, some of the things that he's been working on, that have been trying to have been on that, that that goal list or that checklist of these are some things that I need to do that I need to accomplish. Um, and we were just taking some time and talking of like, Hey, you know, just reflecting on, I said, I wanted to do this and it's happening. Um, I was working on this part and now it's done. Uh, and it was just a reminder to me that as I was encouraging him to make sure he takes the time to reflect and enjoy it it's like wait a minute Latavia have you been doing these things because I've always described myself as someone who is behind the scenes getting just get the work done let me know you know am I gonna make it happen I don't need to be in the spotlight <laughs> I'd prefer being behind the camera <laughs> so this whole even this me doing this this podcast and then adding the video part to it is a stretch uh but it's like we were talking and just reminding me like busy being a worker and I've touched on this in some of the previous um, episodes but just being so busy working and getting the work done and checking things off the list that it's easy to forget like to take a moment to be like hey I did that like I said I wanted to do it I've been talking about it been working towards it and it's done so like, oh, let me sit here and take this in. Let me celebrate my small victory, this small moment and like acknowledge it. Not to say that, okay, hey, it happened. I'm done and I don't do anything else, but just pausing and acknowledging like, yes, I did that. And we can, you know, we're getting closer and it's a part of the process, learning to enjoy the different bits and pieces of the process um and kind of on the flip side of that I was listening to or watched a post um from Kev on stage earlier maybe today or yesterday about um he said people often ask him advice about starting a podcast and some other people that I follow I've seen in just articles and things about oh how to be successful or the traits of this and all these different things and one common thread or common denominator in listening to all of these people or these things is discipline keeps coming up and it's like on one hand it get busy you make a list and you're just grinding 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 you're not taking the time to enjoy it but on the flip side of that I think and I've been guilty of it as well sometimes we get, we are so busy and so so focused on making a list and figuring out what all do we need or trying to get certain you know accomplish certain things before we do that big thing um or before we add something or do the next thing it's like I gotta have I need to make sure I pay this debt off I gotta have this I gotta be a certain age I gotta have certain equipment I need to pay off debt I need to accomplish this uh you know I need to get this promotion I need to have this set up uh I need to be in a relationship I need to be married to go travel or just a variety of things and these are some of the things that I've said to myself in the past or I've heard people say and it's like just waiting for so many boxes to be checked before I can I am qualified in my mind or before we think we're qualified to do certain things and it's like a lot of times we plan ourselves out of doing something 
And I think a lot of times it's fueled by fear, um, fear of failing, fear of succeeding, whatever it is. It could be a combination of the two, but it's just like making plans are great. Um, setting goals are great, but we have to figure out the balance of, okay, let me make a plan. Let me think about it and, and then execute it. Because a lot of times we get stuck in the planning phase. Uh, and this past weekend, uh, I participated in a small business forum that my chapter hosted. Um, and we were just talking the, the, the topic or that part, the part two of the forum was getting started and focusing on people who either, you know, you've been thinking about starting a business or you've started, but you're kind of stagnant. So just the things of what you need and what was said multiple times during the forum um, that even was a takeaway from myself is you ha you can create a, you know, you want to have a business plan, but sometimes when you get that business, you start working on the business plan and you have this beautiful, detailed, nuanced business plan that's like four or five pages or sometimes 20 with all this research and analysis and strategy, but then it's like, you don't do anything with it. It's just beautiful. It's pretty. It's ready. But then it's like, okay, you get stuck trying to perfect the business plan that you don't, and you don't even begin the business. So it's just start. Um, there are a lot of steps, there are a lot of tools. And like I said, I'm not saying you don't wanna do your research and prepare, but sometimes we have to just do it. Um, you know, Nike got it right with that whole just do it, but it's like sometimes we have to take the first steps. Uh, and, and one of the things in terms of a goal that I had set for myself last year was, I want to start putting myself out there more and with respect to business, even with doing this podcast um, of just promoting myself and the things that I do, because as I mentioned earlier, I'm very much a worker bee and I will just come in, I will join an organization, do whatever. And it's like, what need, what's the work that needs to be done? Okay, I'll start doing it and don't ever, rarely, it is rare that I will say, hey, this is who I am. These are the things that I do. This is how I can contribute. Um, kind of that, let me be come in and be humble before I start telling you, trying to run things, which I still think is a great approach, but I'm learning that there's got to be a balance because if you don't promote you, if you don't hype yourself up, nobody else will. And <laughs> there've been times where I was thinking like, Hey, I wonder why they didn't ask me. And then it's like, Oh, duh they don't know that you do that they didn't know that you did this and it's interesting in this last year there have been multiple instances where i have been in conversation with people that i have known or worked with and um or volunteered with in some type of capacity for well over a year or two and just randomly something will come up and it's oh i didn't know you were an attorney i didn't know you did this and so it's like okay all right, Latavia, that's not, you can't get upset or frustrated when people don't know what you do or don't know what you're capable of if you have not told anyone. So in me reintroducing myself to you all who are listening or watching, um, and even for myself, it's like, okay, yes, I am an attorney. I I host a podcast. And oh, by the way, I now make waist beads and bracelets. Um, I am... I'm a sister, I'm a daughter, I'm a friend. Um, these are the things to do it, but, and I would say, it's, as I'm saying these things, I'm thinking about the Love Hour podcast with um, Kev on stage and Miss Kev on stage, which I really appreciate what they're doing in general overall with their business, but also just some of the topics that they cover, specifically one of the, the Love Hours she was talking about, um, I think it was imposter syndrome and just kind of that balance of, her understanding what hum humility actually means and kind of the definition she had kind of formed in her mind of I've got to not big myself up and it means to come under and I just need to, you know, kind of do things and not bring attention to myself, not like essentially not hype myself up. And it's like, well, no, or even the concept of if I talk about the things that I've done, even if they're factual, then that's braggadocious, that's bragging, or that's me 
or it could be perceived as me thinking that I'm better than other people and it's like yeah that's and when she said it I'm like oh you that is me I understand because for so long I have I did uh operate from that mindset of like okay I am humble in order to be humble I can't come in talking about what I've done because that's that's me bragging and it's like in actuality that's not um that's really that's me dimming my light <laughs> and how can if I am hiding or downplaying my gifts and talents of the things that God's blessed me with, then that's actually not, it's not only is it hurting me, it's hurting the people that I've been called to. And so one of the things that the guests they had that talked about is like in terms of humility is the, ex the analogy that was given was, you know, if it's, you know, in a sense of playing sports, I played basketball and it's like, if you score 20 points, had 10 rebounds, um, you know, two blocks or however many assists, and you talk to someone about your stats after the game, those are facts. That's not a, hey, you know, the game happened and I did this, 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 and this. You can be excited about that. You can share that that's something to celebrate. And saying that does not change, you know, it's not bragging. It's not the same as though if you didn't score anything, you come like, hey, yeah, that was I was on this game. I was a man, blah, blah, blah and you scored nothing and barely played that's you bragging that's like that's essentially that's lying but it's a difference of like if there's someone who excuse me I guess and I'm trying to remember how it was put but essentially it's if I am sharing that this is what I did in the game there's nothing wrong with it that's not bragging that's not being conceited or cocky um and I think it's also about in the way that we communicate this information because of course is if I had this great game and my teammate you know had a whole bunch of missed shots or turnovers it would be insensitive to come in and talk about oh yeah you suck you did this and look at what I did in comparison and so what for me what resonated is hearing the the breakdown was I thought just say you know I would look at it as even if I just said what I did regardless of how I said it um or to whom then that would be perceived as me bragging or me being cocky and it's like it's not and also it's none of my business how someone else receives it that's not my responsibility that's not on me uh, so it's it's just like hey it's okay to acknowledge who you are what you do what you've accomplished there is no shame in that and quite frankly there are people who need to hear the information and who are waiting for you to share who you are share your story and so bringing it back to um my former student that i spoke to it's refreshing it is encouraging to know that something that i really to be honest i at the time i was more i'm just trying to do my job and connect and find new ways and you can connect you as a student or you all as students can connect with other students better than i can um and i know that my intention was always to be supportive and encouraging of the students, but to know that it had the impact that it had is, it, it, that is humbling in and of itself. And it's just like, okay, you were onto something and I'm honored that, you know, he still thinks of me as someone to reach out to for feedback or for advice or just to talk through things. Um, and it's like, okay, you did something right. So how about we just keep this thing going of opening your mouth um and the small business form i mentioned that i did this past weekend was another example of like i said one of the goals i had for myself was you need to put yourself out there more you need to actually open your mouth and and share um and so that was and i shared it with the people on that were watching at the time listening at the time of as i'm telling encouraging people in terms of your business to just do it uh and then someone put it you know i had this plan but i just kind of started in the middle it's like okay yes me being here on this panel right now is an example of me just doing it and not 
uh, I forget where I read it, but it's like, you know, don't worry about doing it right or doing it perfect. Just get it out there. And I suffer from <laughs> being a perfectionist and wanting to make sure things are done the right way the first time. And that's not realistic. Um, and so it's, it's freeing to just get the information out there and accepting that you'll make mistakes. It's not the end of the world. It's okay. Um, but all, and just because there are other people doing things, the same thing that you are, or even, you know, doing it in a similar way, nobody is like you. And like I said earlier, the people that are called to me and the things that I have to say or my experiences are different from the others. And so just because somebody else, please, there's plenty of podcasts. So just because other people are doing podcasts doesn't mean that you can't do one. Um, just if it's a business that you want to do, um, like I've seen a few different, I've, I've talked to some people recently that they are creating like body oils or shea butter or body butters. There's plenty of, there's a lot of those on the market, but every person I've spoken to, they're doing something different. It's like their own special touch to it, their own unique touch. Um, not to mention their, the access or the network they have is different from the other person's. And so it's, there is something out here for everyone. There's room for everyone. And I guess to try to pull this all together, it's my advice to myself as well as those listening is to just do it. Um, <laughs> to make a plan, but don't get so caught up on checking, you know, making the perfect plan or making these very law, you know, make goals, but make them detailed. Give yourself kind of measurable things that you can then take the moment to stop and say, okay, I did that. We got it done. We're making progress. And so that as you're going through and things are inevitably, inevitably you're going to have challenges and things get difficult, you can look back and be like, okay, but yeah, remember last year I said, I didn't think I could do this. And then I got it done. And then slowly, but surely before you know, you look back and it's like, oh, I'm not where I started. So progress has been made and keep focusing on that. And like I said, there is a freedom in that. There's a a joy, kind of a lightness in just knowing I'm making progress. <laughs> um, even in thinking about, like I said, with this podcast of where I was when I started in terms of coming up with ideas or just even doing it and even where I, at where I was career wise relationship wise emotionally mentally um even living arrangements things like that just where I was when I started as opposed to where I am now and it's only been um what about a year and a half so it's like oh, wow if this much progress has been made in that short amount of time imagine how much i can do especially if i stop getting in my own way um and over or thinking myself out of things or trying to think too far ahead and I, like i said i it could just be me but i i think there are others who struggle with some aspect of that and so like i said i want to encourage you all to to take some time and actually think about like, what is it that I really want to do? Or what are some things that I've wanted to do and I haven't been doing? And like, what are the reasons that you haven't? And then just start, um, like in, in talking to the, the, the former student earlier about, you know, it's like been working on this thing, but I haven't gotten far, but hey, you got some words on the paper. And I saw a post from uh, someone I went to school with last week about a script that they, a script they've been working on and she's like I started this like two three years ago and then I started writing then life happened and all these different things but hey now I've gotten the first draft done like no it's not final because I'm gonna it's just the first draft I gotta go back but I got it done and there is you know this sense of accomplishment of I did it and it's not just it's no longer just an idea it's not just something I'm talking about it's I have a tangible thing in front of me that I can say I did it 
and now I can go back and work on it. Um, and so, like I said, I would just say for everyone listening, once again, like I said, just be encouraged. And as I have part of, like I said, the whole process, this whole thing of doing the podcast and everything, it's about remembering that it is a process. It's a journey and figuring out ways to enjoy this journey. And with that, before I go, I do want to share somewhat of them somewhat related somewhat a little bit light a lighter but in terms of my random shower thought for this week a random thought and I say this one is random maybe not so random but um thought about it this morning when I was in the shower but just thinking back in just terms of kind of reflecting on all the things that have happened and I was around um a friend who has a, a daughter who's eight and just things about just like people always talk about kids have no filter and they don't but they are very wise and they're they are people because I think we were talking I was like sometimes I just I don't know if I should talk to them like a baby or like a little kid or like an adult because some of the things that she says I just don't know and it's like I just talk to her like she's another adult and it's like you know what you're right <laughs> children are people but I brought that up because in the sense of children have no filter they also have not been jaded they are you know, most times children are just full of light, like love, laughter. They have little to no cares in the world because they have no responsibilities, but they are, they have, they are open-minded, they are, their hearts are open and they're just open and willing to try things. And it's like, I wonder what it would be like if we never, if we didn't lose that, like if somehow we could be programmed to when the way we are as kids in terms of just that curiosity that openness to try things that fearlessness of even if I fall I'm gonna get back up and I'm gonna do it again and I'm gonna go try these things and the the daringness the what you know that boldness to just be like well what about this or what if like what that would look like if all of us had that like we didn't get jaded or bogged down by reality um and or even though you know as we get older adulting and life has its own challenges but if we were able to keep that eagerness at the forefront like yo what would that be like would it be chaos because everybody is just out here doing things and there's no adults per se or would it be kind of like we just kind of regulate ourselves? Because I think about, you know, if you think about kids playing on the playground, sometimes it could look like just kind of mass chaos. Everybody's running around, but it's not always that way. Sometimes they, they figure out ways. They have conflict resolution skills sometimes that they just, they have that they work out. Because I've seen some kids sit there and have conversations and they develop relationships and it's just like, hmm. Y'all get along better than adults. Y'all function better. So like I said, I just wonder what it would be like if we continue to have no filter and we were just honest with ourselves and everybody else and we were just still open, fearless, daring um, as we wanted to be. And not just a select few people, but like if we all were that way, I just wonder what that would look like. So let me know what you think about that. If you are someone who <laughs> has no filter and still kind of approaches the world the way you did as a child, or if you're not, let me know in the comments. But thank you all for listening. Um, as I have said a few times throughout this episode, just remember that life is a journey. It's a process. It's not a destination. And even when it doesn't look like it or feel like, remember that everything is working out for our good. Until next time.